Happy New Year, Haksamea. So tonight is a special night. This is actually, again, it's a double Sabbath because it's actually Rosh Hashanah, which is the holiday, but it's also Sabbath. And then Sunday is also the second day of Rosh Hashanah. So it's actually like a triple play. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but anyway, well, welcome uh, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Messiah. We're, we're grateful to be in a new year. Actually, about 22 minutes ago, we welcomed 5784. Wow. So, so it's, a, it's a new year, it's a new beginning. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Yes. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're ready to, to roll. Through the door. So, and um, all, all of you know that all of these feasts and festivals and seasons and days and months and years are appointed by the stars and the moon that God put in the sky. Because that the light that he created is a message for all of us. And he is, Yeshua is the light of the world. And so that's where we worship. And we do know that uh, this particular week is also, we don't have a Torah portion per se, we have a festival portion. So the festival portion is about Isaac's birth and Isaac's, when, when Abraham took Isaac to be sacrificed. So it's a foretelling of, that's really what all of the scripture is, it's about a foretelling. And really the reason we exist as Shema Israel is multiple reasons, but we, we exist to not be ashamed of the gospel, but that we proclaim Yeshua. And we're not ashamed of his name, we're, we believe that he is the Messiah. And uh, even, even last night I was with a Jewish person and she said to me as she was young, she wanted to be a Christian. And um, anyway, I don't, I don't know where she is right now. We didn't get very much further. There was a, a different kind of meeting. So, um, but we do know that all of the holidays from the new moon, which really is about his birth, and you know, we know Passover is about his, his death, and we know that the Feast of Unleavened Bread is really about his purity. We also know that the Feast of First Fruits is about his resurrection. And we know that Shavuot, which we celebrated about well, in the summer, <laughs> quite a while ago, was about the pouring out of his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we know that this holiday, we know what this holiday is. It's the, it's the festival of, of trumpets mm -hmm. uh, and the blowing of the shofar, and which means that signals his return, so that we know we know his return is coming, but none of us know the day or the hour. Only the Father does. Mm -hmm. So that's why we celebrate this particular holiday. So wow. now we're going to have the ladies who'd like to light the candles on the sink. I think Janet's going to do one little no. thing before we light the candles. Yeah. Okay. So anyone that'd like to light the candles, ladies, you're welcome to come up here. And the uh, prayers are on the front panel of your program as well as up here. Oh, it's a little different tonight? Yeah, this is ferocious. Okay, well then don't read the ones on the front panel. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with me when I was putting it together. Well, I'll clean my room, Ema. Yeah. <laughs> Girl. I didn't clean my room. Well, I to get them lit. Rosh Hashanah is two days. The candles are lit both nights, but the second night, 
she doesn't strike a match again. There has to be an existing light that is used oh. to continue the light. Oh, so, so she won't have this problem tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay. laughs> Alright, stand up and face the east, which is this wall. And on the front panel, we have the Shema. We're going to sing it in Hebrew, and then we'll recite it in English.
So that was your practice. That was a practice. I just want to welcome you again. Um, you know, this again. So I think most of you have a copy of the Torah portions, and it's also online. So if you go to TorahPortions.org, every week they have the Torah portion on there, and also on there if you want to listen, if you want to hear somebody read the Torah portion to you. It'll, it'll read it to you. It'll read you the Torah portion, the half Torah portion, and the, which is the Torah, half Torah is the prophetic. It also reads you the New Covenant portion. So if you want to hear, you know, during the week, like this week, you could go on and listen to the festival portions on TorahPortions.org. So it's actually, it's quite nice to, sometimes to be able to hear somebody read you the scripture. Um, it's not quite like your mother or father reading it to you, but, or, or your wife or your spouse or your friend, but it's still nice to hear the word of God uh, because it, it makes a difference. So um, I really, we're going to have some, uh, so briefly we know that next week we're going to meet for Yom Kippur on, on Friday night, even though Yom Kippur doesn't start until Sunday night, we're going to meet here on Friday night. And also, um, because of that, normally after the Yom Kippur service, you fast, but because it's not actually on a holiday, we're not going to fast next week. Uh, I mean, you can if you want to, because anybody, anybody can fast anytime they want, but in terms of an official fast, the official fast is actually Sunday night, and Monday. Um, and then the following two weeks from tonight, we have a, we're going to have a little demonstration later after the whole service. Um, Carl built kind of a prototype of what the soup is going to look like, and we're going to put that together, and we're going to have, we're going to need some volunteers to help us decorate it, and we're going to talk about that as a group after, probably during the time of the, the nosh when we eat. So it's a lot of uh, announcements, but um, just pay attention um, and listen. Uh, God is speaking, and I just pray that you hear his voice. So mm -hmm. we'll, you're going to do, actually do the dance now so you can move the podium. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. We're, we're open to the order. <coughs> What's that? Salads. Salads? Oh, okay. For Shabbat. Salads for Shabbat next week, okay. And that includes green salad, fruit salad, any kind of salad. Potato okay. salad, egg salad, tuna egg salad, salad, tuna salad, 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 chicken salad. We're getting hungry. Michelle's allergic to fish. Michelle's allergic to fish. She should eat it. She doesn't eat it.
songs but the anointing and so I started listening to this song and I love it because it's written in Portuguese worship team out of I must be Brazil and Portugal and then I found a recording where they got together with the most amazing young musicians from Israel and they did it in Portuguese and Hebrew wow. And we're going to do it later on. We won't do the whole song tonight because I've got to learn how to sing it. I'd like to learn how to sing it in Hebrew. I might ask your help, Janet. But it doesn't follow the pentameter of the song. So you've got to kind of make up your own melody and syncopation. So I'm really good at that. But I was listening to it. And I was watching the translation on the screen. And I started to weep because these young worship team, they were singing about Yeshua but they were singing about him coming on the mountains. Mm -hmm. Him leaping and dancing and jumping over the mountains of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And I went, you know, we often think of us running towards God, but it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. He's been pursuing us mm -hmm. from the moment he thought of us. Mm -hmm. And that day will come where we will see him leaping over the mountains. So, Tony, thank you for sharing that with me. And I was just, I had such a picture of Yeshua dancing over the mountains. He can't wait to come get his bride. So, we'll sing a little bit of that song tonight. But we're going to sing really, this is amazing prayer. It's for us, Shema Yisrael, which means here. And I love where it says, He is Lord over all, heaven and earth will shake. Yes. at the sound of his name. I remember reading a scripture that where David is talking about the mountains trembling in the presence of the Lord. Trembling and shaking in his presence. And you know, we've said this before, and I'm, the God of Israel, our God, even though the other nations think that they could end the reign of the God of Israel, they can't. He is forever, and he has established his throne. And one day, it talks about us ruling and reigning on the earth. So the earth is the Lord's, yes. and everything in it. The scripture says that the glory of the Lord fills the earth. 
So if that's true, and I believe it's true, every one of us is filled. His glory. We all have this deposit. When we get together, we say, oh, it was a glorious time. It's because all these deposits of glory are in the same room. And he moves into our worship. I literally believe he comes and rests on us. It says he inhabits the praises of his people. I've experienced where he just sits on me. Jay, did you feel that last week, him sitting on you? That's the Lord. He moves into our worship. So as we sing this tonight, make this your prayer. Make this your prayer for the desert, declaring over the desert. De declaring over the Jewish community in the desert. Yes. Shema Yisrael. Mm
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who miraculously delivered our fathers in days of old at this season. O Lord our God, on this solemn season of the new year, we pray to you. Be near us in our trial. Strengthen us when crisis surrounds us. May the festival lights for always remind us of your power to heal and forgive and of your love which is always available to us even when we do not deserve it. May the light of our faith in you always shine brightly in our hearts and give us courage equal to whatever circumstances we may face. Bless us in the new year yes. and all those we love with yes. life and health and peace. Amen. Barhu et Adonai Hambarach. Barhu et Adonai Hambarach. <laughs> Bless the Lord who is to be praised. Praise be the Lord who is blessed for all eternity. Deserving of praise are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who by your word brings on the evening twilight and by your wisdom opens the gates of It's my adult vocabulary. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I need to back up because I don't want you all to feel like you're having trouble. You know, right, Ma? Okay, okay. Oh, Janet, if you didn't just bring my alpha back to me. <laughs> I could lose it then. And on the hills of Ladar Vador, yep. passing down from generation to generation. And I'm going to take the moment just because it's just God ordained. And some of you received earlier, and I didn't plan it, so I don't have more, but I can bring them next week. But I have something just slightly a little different. If you can see this one. Now, I could ask Janet to read it, <laughs> but uh, I don't think the rest of you could read it. But if I hold up this one, <laughs> this is the English version. This is my Abba, my dad's story. This is passing down from generation to generation, and these lips will carry it on. And I am so privileged and so honored. This is hot off the press. I cannot tell you when the Lord put it on my heart to have my Abba's story put into Hebrew. We've gone through a roller coaster ride getting it accomplished, <laughs> and in the end, God sent us. David, Israeli David, not yet a believer in Mashiach, in Messiah, to help us translate it accurately. And he even said, I may not agree with what you say, but it needs to be said right. <laughs> and uh, he has my first sample copy, and then Rabbi Naki, who I had the privilege of meeting in Israel, in Yerushalayim, 
came out, stayed for a short time at my house. We had a little gathering, and he went home with my second and only other sample in Hebrew. And I literally picked these up from the printer yesterday. And I'm meeting with, I cut with those of you who know Tom and Jeannie, who go into Israel yearly and spend about a month living among the people. And they're going to be at my house this weekend. We're handing off some, and they'll go right into Israel. I mean, God's timing is perfect. It is perfect. It's perfect. And what a privilege I have to carry on the heritage that I was born with. Yes. The yes. heritage that came Amen. on both sides, my Abba and my Ima, both. Yes. My upbringing is so rich. I was taught to know and appreciate all of my heritage, but I was taught it in its fullness. I was taught it in its completion. Mm -hmm. So I was taught mm -hmm. Judeo-Christianity, mm -hmm. the bud and the flower, mm -hmm. the beginning and the completion. It's one story. Mm -hmm. It goes from Bereshit, and it ends in the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. Those Amen. are the first four words. In English, you say the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. But that's Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. Christ is simply the English of the Hebrew Mashiach, Messiah. So it's, it's one story woven as only our God could do it. So amazing in the fourth telling, the foretelling, the shadowing, the pictures, the richness. And as we come into Rosh Hashanah, new year, new start, and here we are with a, this his story in Hebrew now, which is only fitting. I, you know, I honestly have to ask my Abba when I'm in heaven one day, why didn't you ever do this? <laughs> why didn't we think of this years ago? I have no idea, but this is the timing that God wanted. And to hear Janet say the prayers the way my Abba would say them. And uh, it is quite a story. I some of you got it in, in English. I have one left, but like I say, I'll bring more next week for any who want. And please share it. Pass it on. Share it with others also. But we've got an exciting night. This has been great. And we're just, we're going we're gonna to just keep flying. I agree, Thomas, that Yeshua is coming with excitement to us, but we're going to meet him part way. <laughs> And who doesn't like a fresh start? Who doesn't like to have a clean slate, a new beginning, a reset, a restart, just as we sing? And you've already heard some of our names, Lashana, Tova, that's Happy New Year or Good New Year. Rosh Hashanah simply means the head of the year, the beginning of the year. You might hear us call it Yom HaTorah, that's the Feast of Trumpets. The blowing of the shofar, that stresses God's faithfulness to his covenant promises. And yet we also call it Yom Hadin, and that's the day of judgment. Our Mishnah gives us that name, and that stresses God's righteousness and his justice. And we'll talk more about that as we unfold. But right now, with Rosh Hashanah, the new start, the new year, the new beginning, it takes us all the way back back to the very first, back to the new beginning, back to where Elohim spoke in the beginning. Bara, do you know it? Okay, maybe we don't know it. In the beginning, Bara, Elohim, oh goodness, where is it? I'm trying to say Bereshit, the first verse, and I'm choking. <laughs> yes, that's the English, but I want it in the Hebrew. Yeah. The word was with God. Bereshit, Elohim, bara. There we go. In the beginning. In the beginning. I, I apologize. I've known this from this side. You know, sometimes you just trip over. You, you wrap your tongue around your eye tooth. You can't see where you're going. So, <laughs> but... In the beginning, why am I taking us all the way back to the beginning? Let me ask you a question. Do any of you know when creation took place? In the beginning. <laughs> a very good place to start. <laughs> what was that? Gracie? Gracie. That's good. Good. That's a gymism. According, <laughs> according to our sages, we are celebrating the beginning, but it actually started six days ago. Now, I don't know how many years to say. Our calendar tells us about 5784, but we know our calendar's a little bit off. We just don't know how much, but we're close. But 
Our sages say on Elul the 25th, and we know Elul was the last month where every day we've been blowing the shofar, every day we've been contemplating and thinking about our place and where we are with God and, and how our lives have been. And they say on the 25th was day one of creation. And that makes us on day six right now when God <coughs> created Adam, when God made his first human being. So this is the anniversary of the day that God made Adam and placed him in his garden. And I call it God's garden because that's what our scriptures tell us. In Bereshit chapter 2 verse 8 it says that Adonai God, it actually says Yahweh Elohim, planted a garden toward the east in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Now our Hebrew Yahweh Elohim is very interesting because Yahweh, we usually say Yehovah for Yahweh, and that's the proper name for our God. That's his name expressing the deity of who he is, but that's also the name he uses when he enters into intimate relationship, covenant with us. And Elohim is the divine being, is the exceedingly, it's the ruler, the judge, it's the mighty one. What are you saying about the mighty God of Israel tonight? Perfect. Perfect. So when we read Elohim, and in, in, in here I even put it down in my Hebrew, Bereshit, bara Elohim, et hashamayim, et ha-aretz. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when we read that, we talk about the Borei Olam. We talk about that he's the creator and he is the sustainer of all of creation. And that is quite fitting because we owe all of our allegiance to the Creator. We're accountable to Him. If He made us, we're accountable to Him, and we know He did. And as I said, right from the very beginning, He entered into an intimate relationship with the man He created. He walked and He talked in the cool of the evening with Adam and Chava, with Adam and with Eve. And He, before that point, even intimately breathed in to the nostrils of Adam and he became a living being. Brought breath of life into him. That's Bereshit, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And in our Jewish tradition, we believe that we stand before God as our personal creator and as our judge on Rosh Hashanah. Now, remember one of the names was Yom Hadin, the day of judgment. Again, you'll hear more about it, but that's what I'm talking about. But right now, it's also called Yom HaTorah, the day of trumpets. You heard me blow the shofar, I blew one long, then I blow three, that's four, then I blow nine quick staccato notes, that's 13, and then one long blast is 14. Now I lost track in the song how many times we heard it, but we need to be counting because how many times do we need to hear the shofar within the 24-hour period of time, the Rosh Hashanah? 100. We're supposed to hear or say or recite 100 blessings every day. And on Rosh Hashanah, to hear the shofar blown is a blessing. So we give a shout, we blast. Now, I have to tell you, for any who are of Orthodox background, we're breaking the rules, okay? <laughs> we're allowed at that freedom because we're not under the law. But the shofar is not blown on the Shabbat. So they'll wait till tomorrow, our second day of Rosh Hashanah, from sundown tomorrow night to sundown the next night. They'll blow it 100 times. But since we're not going to be here together, we had to do it now. <laughs> so I want to encourage us. You've been a great participating audience. It hasn't ended. We're going to continue to have you participating. You're going to raise a shout. You're going to give a blast. You're going to express outwardly. It's an outward show, and it is festive, and it is noisy in the synagogue, and this was a synagogue, so you're just bringing up what's still here. Yes. You know, can yes. you hear it? Yes. Can yes. you hear it? Yes. The walls are echoing. They're saying, oh, yes. we've heard this before. <laughs> but now we get the crowning part on it because we go to that completion. <laughs> let me back up just a little bit before I get to our shofar. And let me give you our scripture for Rosh Hashanah. It's really long, so you've got to listen for a long time while I read to you <laughs> from Viacra. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. Tell the people of Israel, in the seventh month, the first of the month is to be for you a day of complete rest for remembering. A holy convocation announced with blasts on the shofar. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. 
and bring an offering made by fire to Adonai. And that's it. That's <laughs> what we're told. That's it. <laughs> but we do add. Not add, I shouldn't say that. We do break that down, and there are things that happen that we do during this time to reflect what he just said in the verse, because we're to remember. We're to talk about this. We're to come together. We're doing that now. And we express our joy over a new year, and we say, Happy New Year. We send cards, and we, we put that in our cards. That for those of you who have not been with us and don't know the background, you have to have caught something in that verse. It didn't say on the first day of the first month. It said on the first day of the seventh month. Now, even on our English calendar, seventh month is July. How many of you run around and tell everyone, Happy New Year in July? <laughs> and if you did, <laughs> what kind of response would you get? <laughs> so what are they talking about? Technically, they will say, well, it's the agricultural. It's the end of the past season, and we're starting the new seasons, and the new plantings, and the new harvesting, and we're, we're celebrating the agricultural. Some will say the civil new year also. And if you realize, if you work at a place that has a fiscal new year, very often that's not in January. The kids go back to school. They start a new year in school in September. So it's not such a foreign thought. But it's the seventh month because that's what God said. And then they, they center it around the, the change in the season, as I've said, and they celebrate for two days because back in the olden days, before we had all the technology and the ability to get a message around the world in literally a, in a heartbeat, they had runners. The Sanhedrin would look for the proof of the new moon. And when they saw the new moon, then they knew the new month was beginning. Well, that would put it right on the first day of that month, which is when we're supposed to celebrate. But the runner couldn't run then. He couldn't go further than a Sabbath day's journey. He couldn't pass the message on to village and village and village. So there is this, how do we do this? So they sent out, as they saw it approaching, a runner earlier who would go and start the cycle so that some people actually would celebrate early, but then they've got to be right on target with what God said. So let's celebrate for two days so that if we're on the side that started early and not where we caught up, we still have celebrated on the right day. And they've just carried the tradition forward. Uh, some say that that started when they came out of Babylon. Babylon did give possibly the influence to the name of the month Tishri because in Babylonian Tishri is beginning. So we don't know if it was a Babylonian New Year. We don't know how they latched on to that, but uh, the, the root of it, Shara or Shari, does mean to begin. So with all of this in our traditions, and if you've been around Jewish people, you know we love our traditions. <laughs> this is why they celebrate the, the two days. Now, we know that God put into the stars his plan through the ages. He brought the whole message. He just showed through the stars the foretelling of the coming of Mashiach as the Lamb of God, who would give his life for the sin of the world. We also see in those stars where he would come again crowned in glory. And as we look at that and we get the pure story from the stars, we don't look at what's called astrology. We look at what's called astronomy. We go back to the roots. We don't look at what they do with it today because Satan is a great counterfeit and he's, he's really worked that. But when we look at what the stars, the constellation that is there in relation to Israel at this time, it is Libra. It is the scales or the balance. Mm -hmm. And we know that this month is a month when the days and the nights are almost mm -hmm. equal. It's the time when merits and the debits of the world and the individual are weighed in the balance. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Day of Justice, mm -hmm. all fitting with our Rosh Hashanah. So we know where some of this background comes from and some of the foods that we love to eat and everything's prepared ahead. You can't work on Rosh Hashanah. No cooking, no baking. You can't even carry the fire from one point to another. As I mentioned, the candles have to be lit tomorrow by something that's already lit so that it just carries it on. They'll eat the challah that you'll see tonight is six, 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 six
I'm sorry, is this circle? Is this circle cyclical? There we go. Got the word out. And they say that's a picture of life, the circle of life. The life begins, the life ends, but the continuation of the life cycle. Yet also we see it as a picture of the crown, the crown that will be on Mashiach's head, the crown that will make him King Messiah when we are obedient to him. When the land is crying out, Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and when they're going to worship him and put him on his earthly throne as he is in heaven now. They eat the pomegranate. It's a symbolic fruit. It has 613 seeds. Mm -hmm. And they say that's to remind them of 613 commandments. Mm -hmm. But I also hear at Rosh Hashanah, that's how many mitzvot, how many good deeds you need to do in the next year. <laughs> so count the seeds. <laughs> they eat dates, and they eat figs, and they have a kiddush wine, which is a sweeter wine than usual. Some say that's because some Jewish communities were impoverished, and they couldn't buy the expensive wine, and the cheap wines are sweeter. And some say it's because they added raisins, and they would have all kinds of reasons. But they'll, they'll incorporate that. We stay with our grape juice, but when we have the kiddush tonight, you can remember that. They eat honey cake. I think there's a, 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 a babka. Babka, thank you. I don't know where I am to like this. <laughs> uh, and they'll give those as gifts also. And then they'll even be those who eat a fish head. Because the scripture says that Israel and the Jewish people are to be the head and not the tail. Some will put the whole fish on the plate and tell you, you know, notice the head. But, but my mom and dad, my Ima and Abba, in Israel when it was very young, 1953, 54, when uh, they were at, uh, it might have been the celebration, it may not have been, but my Ima was served a fish head. It was considered a delicacy. She watched her hostess to kind of do what she should do, but she honestly said when the hostess plucked out the eye and ate it, she couldn't go that far. <laughs> Just telling you. And the leek carrots and leeks and new fruits and grains because in Dabarim, Deuteronomy 8 and verse 8, it tells about the seven species of fruits and, and so forth that would be in the promised land, that would be theirs to enjoy. So they eat every single one, the pomegranate, the olive, the, they'll use sometimes the olive oil, the dates, the honey, and so forth. And we can't miss that shofar. So I'm going to have Janet come and give us some of the blessings with the shofar, but I don't want you all left out. And I know you all been practicing. You got your shofar at home. I know you know how to blow it. So you know, I, I got you all a shofar to blow. This is terrible. Forgive me. I got you goyim shofar. <laughs> and very close, Thomas. <laughs> While Janet comes and starts giving us some of the blessings from the shofar or about the shofar, and I'll tell more about it afterward, I'm going to start these around for everybody. And uh, here, I just need to get them out here. Um, and if you want a real shofar, I brought a couple extras of those also. So let me get out of your way. I uh, can you do that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Just peel off the top there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'll let you share with Thomas. I'll let you get started there. I think that's more than enough. <laughs> so, yes. And if anybody wants the authentic, I have a shorter, a short short, and my long. I have the short short. You have the short short? There you go. Oh, no, no, that, that one. The middle? Yeah, medium? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, then I'll leave this one. Isn't it? It's, it's, it's Rosh Hashanah. You can just put them in where Everybody's got one that wants one. You never knew there was such a thing as a glam shofar, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
Oh, I'm sorry. Goyim is Gentile. Then you went out for Chinese in the middle of the day. You didn't spend the night there. No. But they have different So what we're saying, what we're doing tonight is very, very, very abbreviated. And, and every year we do it differently. Some years we've had a lot of the prayers printed out and we tried that. We, Every year it's different. A different flavor. Yeah. And so this year I'm just going to say the, the shofar blessings. And then at the end of that, Rochelle will sound the shofar again. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kiddushanu, edivaro, etzivanu, au tekiat shofar. Shofar. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with your word and has commanded us concerning the sound of the shofar. Anachnu mapilam kol tachanu neinu v'shem Yeshua mishichinu. We offer all our prayers in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Noah ha'olam, Deserving of praise are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who kept us alive, sustained us, and privileged us to reach this season. And, and I just saw it. It just came across in, in the, the internet, but it said, we're only 75 years from the epics. Mm -hmm. We have to mm -hmm. praise our God. He's and kept you know, us alive. I had another thought. In 75, 80 years, I was thinking about, Bruce reminded me that um, the earth shook in Morocco. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in Libya. Mm -hmm. And I said, couldn't happen to a nicer people. <laughs> Why? Because at one point, at a certain point, they rounded up all the Jews, threw them out, mm -hmm. just threw them out. Mm -hmm. They didn't kill them, outright kill them. And I said, God doesn't forget his wrath. Mm -hmm. And although there were innocent people who suffered with this earthquake mm -hmm. and well, the floods in the world, we don't wish that on anyone. God never forgets those who have come against his people. As they blow, they blow like you heard earlier. The one long blow in the beginning is like the coronation, the crowning of the king. Then there's the three short, which are like the heart that's just, it's breaking to be in sync with God. And then there's the nine staccata. And that's the awakening. If you are not awake, it's the alarming sound. And then the one long where you give all that you have in breath to the one who is giving you breath. So as I blow, have fun. Blow yes. with me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
like, yeah, all get an A+. Plus. <laughs> My chauffeur wrote, you reveal yourself in a cloud of glory to your holy people. From the heavens they heard your voice, and you manifested yourself to them in clouds of purity. The whole world trembled at your presence, and your creation stood in awe before you when you, our King, revealed yourself on Mount Sinai to reach your people, your Torah and instructions, causing them to hear your majestic voice and your holy words from flames of fire. Mid thunder and lightning, you revealed yourself to them and you did shine forth on them as the shofar was sounded. It is written in your Torah, on the third day in the morning, there was thunder and lightning, a dense cloud over the mountain, and a loud shofar blast. All the people in the camp trembled. The shofar blast grew louder and louder. Moses spoke and God answered him when the people saw all the thunder and lightning, the blasting of the shofar, and the mountain in smoke. They trembled and stood far back. In the Holy Scriptures, it is written, God ascended amid the blasting of the trumpet. The Lord reveals himself amid the sound of the shofar. With trumpets and the sound of the shofar, shout praise before the King, the Lord. Sound the shofar at the new moon, the time designated for our festival day. This is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty expanse. Praise Him for His saving deeds. Praise Him according to His abundant greatness. Praise Him with the blast of the shofar. Praise Him with psaltery and harp. Praise Him with timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and pipe. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Praise Him with clanging cymbals. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our 
Father, our King, bring glory to Israel, yes. your people. Yes. Our Amen. Father, our King, provide us with your abundant blessings. Our Father, our King, grant our prayers for your sake, not for ours. Mm. Our Father, our King, be gracious to us and answer us, for we are unworthy. Mm. Deal with us in compassion and faithful love and deliver us. So much to say, so much to touch on. I just want to draw out a few things from there. As we blow 100 times, it is thought that it will confuse Satan, our enemy. He'll think they're celebrating. Their king has come. I'm lost, and he'll go away. Would that to be true? <laughs> but we do know the Messiah did come. We do know that his power is still here. His power has brought us to this day, to this season, and he will come again. And the sound of the trumpet is to herald the coming of Messiah and the resurrection of the dead. And we know that prophetically that's what our scriptures speak about. Flying through, there's so much, as, as Janet said, it's two days of services. There's just no way to cover it in a short period of time here. But we've talked about how he's seen as our creator of the world. We've talked about how we've seen our God as Melech, our king, the crowning of the Hala. We even have a whole service just called the Mastop that is just to establish and celebrate and speak of his kingship. That's all it does in that time. And what they're picturing is that millennial reign, the promise of the coming kingdom. But we've got to also talk about that part of judge. That's the part we haven't touched on yet because he is the judge also. There's two words in our Hebrew for judge. One is shofet and the other is deen. And the shofet is much like a ruler. The dean is ruling, is regulating, and it's the time when there's the vindication of God and of his word. But Yeshua shows us that he intimately involved himself in his creation because of his compassion. That's what the Alevi of Malchenu has just cried out for, that compassion of our God. And if I had the time, I could teach you the 13 attributes of our God that come directly from uh, Shemot, from Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. Those 13 attributes of our God are reflected in what Janet just, uh, just prayed, just spoke for you. They speak to a God who is merciful, who is gracious, who is loving kindness, doesn't end, who will forgive our iniquities, who will forgive our sins and our trespasses. And there is a way to come into that. But right now for our beloved Jewish people who do not know the fulfillment, they are living at a very, the most serious time on the entire calendar is right now in the next 10 days. You see, it's believed that God opened two books on this thing, Book of Life, the book of death and in those two books he's written every name if you've lived a good life you've done right by your fellow man and by God he's putting your name in the book of life to live for another year and if you have not then he's putting your name in the book of death for your life to be taken from you during this year and in the ten days when this has started on Rosh Hashanah the judgment was rendered that on Yom Kippur, the judgment is sealed. Mm -hmm. You have 10 days that if you don't have your name in the book of life, you can do all kinds of good deeds. You can do the, the prayers that ask for forgiveness. You can do all that you can with your fellow man and with God to put everything in right so that God will look favorably on you. And they believe that then on that last day when the book is sealed, you could have had your name moved into the book of life. So it's a time of repentance, of reconciliation, of restitution, of praying for pardon, doing benevolent deeds, knowing that the judgment and eternal life is staring you in the face. Now, 
I told you that's our church tradition. Does God have books? Yes, He does. Revelation 13, 8 says, All who dwell on the earth will worship it. It's talking about the Antichrist, the one who is against Messiah. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. And we know the Lamb who was slain, Seha Elohim, is the Lamb of God that we saw, as Bruce said earlier, pictured in our Passover Seder. This is the one that if they're not worshiping him and they don't have him in them, then they will worship the false and their names are not in the book of life for eternity. Judgment does come. Mm. Revelation 20:15. anyone's name who was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Now that's not God being unjust or unfair. That is simply the rules that God established and put down and said that there is one way to go from the eternal damnation into the eternal salvation. That one way he did it all. It's not that we merit it. It's not that we get everything right with our fellow man, we get everything right, we do all these good deeds and we give to the poor and we remember all of this. Those are good to do, but it's not what will save any one of us because to be saved by ourselves, we have to come up to God's holy standard. And no one can come up to God's holy standard. I think everyone in this room would be fair in saying they have not lived a perfect life. Yet one came in human form. God slipped into time and space, put on a face. We call him Yeshua. And he lived. Because he was God, fully God and fully man, he lived a perfect life. So when the time came that he laid down his life, shed his blood, it was innocent blood. It wasn't the justice that he deserved or had earned. And he laid it down on the mercy seat mm -hmm. in our Holy of Holies mm -hmm. that any who would come to believe in him that his blood would be the substitute for them. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Shemot Exodus 15 2 says, The Lord is my strength and my son, this is my song, he has become my salvation. Yeshua, Yeshua, Isaiah 118, come, let us reason together, though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. And again, by after Leviticus 17, the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I, God, have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it's the blood by reason of life that makes atonement. We'll talk greatly about that next week because that's Yom Kippur. But here is what we need to say and we need to know now. God did it all. He did it. Not us. He did it. Tehillim Psalm 32 one says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Isaiah 53.12, Yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors. It's our sins that put him on that cross, that mm. crushed him so that he could justify many because he bore our sins on him. Mm. He took on that sin sacrifice that he might save us. Mm. That's why he had to come and tabernacle among us. And Yochanan 1 tells us that, that he tabernacled with us so that we could be saved through a human who, at the same time as this, I said, is God, but who could take the punishment for us, who could stand in our stead. Telling Psalm 22 describes this so specifically. 700 years before crucifixion was a mode of punishment, and yet it's given so exacting that no one can read that chapter and say that's not what it's talking about. Mm. Why do I bring that out? Because it wasn't an accident. It was God's plan. It was Yeshua's choice. He willingly left heaven to come down to earth, to be born in human flesh, to redeem mankind. He rose from the dead. Hallelujah. That means he conquered sin. He conquered the punishment. He didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. And that's what he offers us, is that newness of life. When we put our faith in him, we don't question if our book is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We know it's written, and not for a year, but for an 
forever and forever. Did you notice, as Janet read, it was on the third day when they heard the shofar, the shaking, and all that happened, and God entering into covenant, and it was on the third day. Yeshua resurrected, mm -hmm. came to life. Third day through scripture shows this principle so many times I stand in awe as I watch it jump out on the pages, off the pages to me. There is one more tie in, and here is our close that sound of the trumpet. We've heard it, we've heard it in Bible times, we've heard it with our people in antiquity, we've heard it today, mm -hmm. and there is a coming sound of the trumpet blowing. Mm -hmm. That sound is going to be heard by those who belong to Yeshua. Mm -hmm. The others will not even hear mm -hmm. it. But there's going to be a shout. There's going to be the sound of the trumpet. It's recorded for us in the Brent Hadashah, in the New Covenant, written by a good Jewish boy yes. by the name of Shaul, Paul. Mm -hmm. And he says in chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Thomas, here he comes, jumping over the hills of Jerusalem. Here he comes. He's going to stop in the air at this time. This is not the second coming. This is not when he will jump literally over those hills and land in Jerusalem with his feet on the earth. And the whole world will know who he is. And he will be crowned king. And he will fulfill every promise to Israel at that time. But this is a little earlier than that. And this is just for those who are his kids. Amen. Remember, God has no grandchildren. Just his kids. <laughs> Each one, when you come into that faith, you will hear that when he descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, the shafar blasts. The dead in Christ will rise first. Mm -hmm. Remember, we just talked about that, mm -hmm. that there would be this resurrection mm -hmm. from the dead. Those who have put their faith in Messiah, remember Christ is the English, Messiah is the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. They'll rise first. And then we who are alive and remain will be mm -hmm. caught up together with them in the clouds mm -hmm. to meet the Lord mm -hmm. in the air. Mm -hmm. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the bridegroom coming for his bride. And if you know the the the, uh, the customs, it's all seen all the way through. That's a whole nother hour lesson on another day. I can't go into it now. But the bridegroom has come to take his bride home and she goes to live in his house. We will tabernacle forever with our God and with Yeshua if we have him in our heart. As we close today, I want to ask you, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Don't wait for Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for anything. Don't leave this room tonight if you don't know that you are ready. Mm -hmm. Because that sound may come tonight. Mm -hmm. That sound may come in the morning. That sound may not come for some time, but I cannot tell you when. I can just tell you it will. And as Pat Seclaremont said, he toots, he'll toot, and I'll scoot. <laughs> you won't have a chance to hmm, decide. No, you, if you are his child, you'll hear the sound, and you will go. That shofar is going to call us up, and I don't want anyone here to not be with us there. You think you had a great time celebrating tonight? <laughs> this isn't even a dress rehearsal. <laughs> they try to say the Shabbat is, but it really isn't. We're not capable. There's so much more that I want to tell you. For God so loved the world. That's why you, and I say it lovingly, Goyim can blow a Goyim shofar, yes. and we love the blast. Do yes. we not, Janet? <laughs> and my other Jewish Janet and a few others around the room. We love that God has brought Jew and Gentile together. Amen. Both come into Amen. the presence of Messiah through his shed blood. Amen. It is right for a Jew. It is right for a Gentile. And it's right for a Jew time. My dad's famous words. <laughs> so as we close in prayer, I want to give you an opportunity. If you have never opened your heart, then as I pray, tell God, tell Yeshua, I want what she just said. I want you in my heart. I want to be your kid. And we're going to go home in the shelter. Let's pray.
Elohim Ha'i, our Most High God. Adonai Yeshua, Lord Jesus. Oh, we praise you. All the day long and through the night, you are our song and you are our salvation. And you have made the way for us to come home to live with you forever and ever. Hallelujah. We praise you. We thank you. And we shout forever to share with others. And Lord, as we now, those of us who have you in our heart, praise you and thank you for that. We also want to give opportunity if anyone here has not experienced this, even at this very moment, just say, yes, Yeshua. I want you as my Messiah. I want you as my Savior. I invite you into my life. Lord God, thank you. You know our hearts. You know us intimately. You know us in the depth of our soul and being. And you know any heart that is open to you right now. And you have promised you will come in and you will never leave. You will never abandon. So we thank you that you are with us, that you have sealed us and you keep us. And one day we will go home to be with you. Until that day, Lord, let us shout it. Let us be the light in the darkness. Let us share with those near and far that more can come home with us on that grand day. We thank you. It is a day to celebrate. We know that you're coming again. We know you will keep your word, and we praise you and thank you forever and ever. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, Amen. And I'll just encourage you, please, if anyone did pray that for the first time, please let me know. Mm -hmm. I'd love to share some more things with you to help you understand fully mm -hmm. the greatest gift you just gave mm -hmm. yourself. So mm -hmm. come talk to me afterward. We're going to have a great time still celebrating. We've got sweets and we've got treats and, and much more to go. But the greatest and the sweetest is Yeshua. 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 Shalom, shalom, shalom. I think we've heard it about 30 times, so here comes 31. All right. <laughs> 